I just bought the 65 inch Sony Bravia A80J, my first OLED TV. I've been using it for a few weeks now and it's obvious that the A80J has a lot more going on than just its eye popping picture quality. The A80J and its more expensive sibling, the A90J hit the market in April and both TVs have already won a lot of praise. But in this video, I'm gonna cover some of the other features and settings on the A80J that you may not have seen elsewhere. Hey, I'm Jim Kimball, editor of cordcuttingreport.com, and welcome back to the channel. If you like hands-on reviews and product comparisons, I hope you'll click the like and subscribe buttons and help me grow this channel. If you wanna know more about me, my review process, you can head over to cordcuttingreport.com and click on the About tab. So even if you already own one of these TVs, I hope this video might show you a few things that you may not know about. Let's start by talking about the design. The 880J kind of looks like this thick pane of glass that happens to be a television. The frame of the TV is metal, it's barely noticeable, and it's pretty obvious as soon as you turn it on. The TV is really all about the picture. The TV comes with a set of really sturdy metal legs, but I decided to mount the TV to a wall in my living room. There's a set of mounting holes on the back and I bought a Sanus mounting kit from Best Buy when I picked up the TV. One major difference between the A80J and the A90J is the audio system. The A80J has 30 watt speakers behind the television. The A90 has twice the power with 60 watt speakers. For me, the power of the speaker system was really a non-issue because I already knew I was gonna be using a sound bar. One of the things that's nice is I'm able to control the sound bar with the remote control because I have it hooked up to an HDMI port in the back of the television. There are four HDMI ports on the back and two of them support HDMI 2.1. One of the reasons why OLED TVs have such a remarkable picture quality is because of its contrast ratio. Like all OLED TVs, the A80J has almost infinite contrast ratio because it doesn't rely on local dimming to either dim or mute certain zones on your TV. You hear about local dimming sometimes when we're talking about LED TVs. With an OLED, each pixel can be turned on and off, so there's no blooming in the picture, which is especially noticeable when you're watching really dark scenes. ADJ supports HDR and Dolby Vision, and with Dolby Vision, your picture is just gonna look just a lot more lifelike. I was really blown away when I started watching season seven of Bosch on Amazon Prime. That's shot in Dolby Vision, and just everything about the picture just made it look more realistic and almost like you were standing right there. I've really never had that kind of experience watching TV before. There's this sort of fluid motion when people are walking across the screen and that creates more of an immersive TV experience. So when my wife and I were out shopping for TVs, we were also looking at the LG G1, but we kept on coming back to the A80J because we're watching the pictures side by side in the store we kept noticing like these little flourishes of detail that the Sony seemed to have. Once we got the TV set up at home, it was really noticeable how well it performs in rooms that have light or, or even a little bit of brightness. You definitely don't wanna set up the TV in a space where it's really up against the window, but you can certainly get a very, very bright picture in a well-lit room. And it's a picture that you can see from several different angles. So this is definitely a TV that can compete with natural light. And if you have someone sitting, say, at a, a faraway chair, you have a lot of guests over, they're still gonna have a really good experience watching a football game or a movie. The A80J and the A90J have what Sony calls the Cognitive Processor XR. The company says this processor understands how people see and hear and helps create a more immersive and realistic looking experience. These TVs come out of the box pretty much calibrated, so I found that I didn't really mess too much with color. I played around with it a little bit, but at the end of the day, I was very, very happy with pretty much how it arrived. I think in the case of this TV, adjusting things is really gonna boil down to personal taste. 
I did notice when I was testing out the different settings, the TV will automatically pick up whether you're streaming something in Dolby Vision versus HDR10 and will give you different choices to adjust your picture based on the resolution that you're streaming with. The A80J runs on Google TV, which is a version of Android 10, and Google TV is gradually replacing Android TV software across all TVs. It debuted last year on the new Google Chromecast with Google TV. One of the most useful things about Google TV is that it aggregates from a variety of streaming apps, both subscription and free. So you can just go to your home screen and see some of the latest things that are on Netflix, HBO Max, Amazon Prime. You can control what Google TV recommends by heading to the bottom of your home screen and choosing which services you subscribe to. Google Assistant is built into the remote. If you ask for, say, Clint Eastwood movies, not only can you get a list broken down by genre, you can also filter your results even further by looking at free options. So you'll get a listing of Eastwood movies included in your subscriptions or available on free services. Sometimes you will find some rental options within those search results, but overall, I found the search function to be really reliable and it really sort of digs out some things that are deep in the library of these streaming services that you would probably never find if you went to the actual app looking for it, just because libraries and streaming services are so huge now. The other really cool part about Google TV is if you subscribe to YouTube TV or Sling TV, there's a live tab that gives you a live TV guide right in the Google interface. If you use a TV antenna, your over-the-air channels also can appear on this menu. They don't incorporate into a single menu, but what would happen is, let's say you subscribe to Sling TV, you would see all your Sling channels, and then after that, you'd see a list of your over-the-air channels. Google Chromecast is built into the TV, so you can cast things from your phone or your tablet. The television also supports Apple AirPlay 2 and HomeKit. So aside from all the streaming options that you get from Google TV, there is one other thing that I got really excited about that I saw on the side of the box. The A80J and the A90J have a next-gen TV tuner that supports ATSC 3.0. If you're shopping for a new TV in the next year or two and you're already an antenna user, you definitely want to see if your TV has one of these tuners. Local stations such as NBC, CBS, PBS are slowly changing over to this next-gen format which supports 4K picture resolution and Dolby Atmos audio. It's currently rolling out in a number of markets across the country. I'll leave a link below to the next-gen TV site so you can figure out when this new over-the-air broadcast standard is coming to your part of the country. So there's no ATSC 3.0 stations yet where I'm living in Boston, but it's important to know that the tuner in the A80J and the A90J are still capable of picking up the current broadcast standard. So I get about 50 channels where I live in Boston, and that includes NBC, CBS, PBS, so you're not gonna have to worry about a compatibility issue if you buy a TV with one of these new tuners inside. So let's talk about the remote control. I really like the remote control that comes with the A80J. As you can see, it's a really long remote with a lot of buttons. There's a lot going on here. I think the challenge for TV makers these days is how do you create a remote control that covers all your bases? There's still a lot of people who subscribe to cable and at the same time, I think manufacturers feel like they probably have to lean into streaming pretty heavily as well. I think the A80J did a pretty good job trying to balance those two things. At the top, there's dedicated launch buttons for YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime. It's funny because I've never been a really big fan of these direct launch buttons on streaming devices like Roku. I never really use them. But since these are located at the top of the remote, I find myself starting to use them a little bit more. So I think even the placement of these buttons was a pretty good call. 
there's actually two buttons that can take you to a channel guide that can aggregate your over the air channels and Pluto TV channels. You can either hit the TV button, which gives you this horizontal footer menu at the bottom of the screen. And you can also hit this guide button right here, more of a grid style menu. Here's the Google Assistant button, which I covered earlier. To the right, there's a quick settings button, which is convenient when you wanna make picture adjustments. There's a navigation wheel, which is pretty common on remote controls, along with channel and volume rockers. The home and back buttons toward the bottom of the remote can help you get to the home screen and navigate in and out of apps. One button that I thought was super handy for me was the display button at the bottom of the remote. When you hit that, there's a little pop-up window in the upper right-hand corner of the screen that tells you what time it is. And that's pretty convenient if you're still trying to get to bed at a good hour, especially if you're watching TV in the dark. The remote control really has everything I want in terms of capabilities, buttons, and features. And it does a pretty good job getting to both streaming apps and my over-the-air channels. So for the A80J models, the one thing that's really missing is that this remote is not backlit in any way. If you spend the extra money on an A90J, you do get a backlit version of this remote. I really wish that Sony included a backlit remote with the A80J. I think with a remote of this size, it was really a mistake on their part. Not counting the center wheel, there's 41 buttons on this remote control. Yeah, 41 buttons to navigate in the dark. You think about the NVIDIA Shield that came out a couple years ago, which retailed for $149. That had a backlit remote. I don't think it's really a cost prohibitive feature, but as a customer, it's something that's very noticeable, especially if you watch a lot of TV at night in the dark. The last thing you wanna do is turn on a lamp or turn on the flashlight in your cell phone just to make sure you're pressing the right button. But overall, I'm really thrilled that I bought this TV. The picture quality is nothing short of dazzling. It's easily the best TV that I've ever tested or owned, and I'm looking forward to having it for a number of years. I think if you were considering an OLED TV in 2021, you'd be hard pressed to find a better TV at this price point. What's your favorite model? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to jump in there and respond to some of your questions and comments. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.